Uh, let's return to our top story now. Uh, it involves a row over the NHS, reignited by Jeremy Corbyn today, who claims that he's obtained unredacted documents from the government, which he says prove that the National Health Service will be part of trade negotiations with the US after Brexit, if a Conservative government is elected. Well, the Prime Minister has reacted to this, denying Mr Corbyn's comments, calling them a diversionary tactic. Well, with me now to talk about this, we have the Associate Director of the Institute of Economic Affairs, Kate Andrews, and the co-chair of Keep Our NHS Public, former GP Tony O'Sullivan. Uh, good afternoon to you both. Kate, I'm going to come to you first, because um, during the break there, I had a look at you on camera, and you were actually reading this document. You've had a look through it. The evidence that Jeremy Corbyn says is in there about the Tories' plans to sell off the NHS, parts of the NHS to the US. Uh, have you seen it? No, it's uh, notably absent. And I think many people who are, uh, you know, reading through uh, these 451 pages have, have also noticed that it is badly absent. In, in fact, I think you can find specific lines in these documents that actually argue the alternative, that, that the NHS is definitely not on the if you look at the document from March 2018, the 21st and 22nd of March, pages 42 and 53 really highlight that the U.S. is focused on locking in existing market access and does not expect new market access in a specific sector to be an outcome of any free trade negotiation. So what it's saying is, you know, there is no intention for the NHS to be opened up to American markets so that they can go right in. They want to protect certain kinds of access that they already have, for example, in the completely private health insurance sector here in the U.K. There's some U.S. access. Uh, you know, this is true for many other countries as well. Uh, America can bid for certain kinds of NHS contracts. Last year in September, they actually won a contract uh, in Scotland. That's already happening without any kind of free trade deal. It's very clear from this document, actually, that the U.S. is not particularly interested in the NHS. And I think it's very telling of the campaign material coming out from the Labour Party today. They're not using clips of these documents. They're using their own claims on their own kind of, you know, paper headings and whatnot. They're not using actual clips from the document because the evidence that they say is in there doesn't seem to exist. Okay, so in Kate's opinion, not as damning as Jeremy Corbyn makes it out to be that report. Um, Tony, your thoughts on how vulnerable the National Health Service will be to selling off to the US after Brexit? Could I just start off with a declaration of interest, please, and, and compare my interest with Kate's? Kate is, is working for a, a free market institute that promotes the uh, competition in healthcare and has been arguing for a, a radical change in NHS provision for many, many years. My, myself, I'm a retired paediatrician. I put children, I put vulnerable people, people with mental health needs, people with learning disability. I put all those above the market and I think that the market should stay out of healthcare. This issue is a matter of trust and I remind the viewers that when Trump was asked about the NHS back in June, he absolutely said the NHS is on the table, everything is on the table. And I ask viewers to say, who do you trust more, Trump and Johnson and Matthew, Matt Hancock, who have denied any privatisation going on in the NHS, despite the obvious truth to the contrary, or do you believe NHS doctors, nurses, therapists okay. who are extremely Tony, let me worried put this, that they're... Let me put this to you then. As someone who's been on the front line and knows what kind of pressures the National Health Service yeah. face, can the NHS survive without private investment? Can it solely exist on taxpayer money? We've got a growing population, uh, a population that's living longer. Is that feasible? It's absolutely feasible. We're the sixth richest economy in the world and we're paying less per head of the population for healthcare than most of the advanced European countries. Now, you'll hear from Kate Andrews' criticism of the NHS and you'll often hear her say that cancer care in Switzerland is far superior. What she never says is that the Swiss economy spends virtually double per head on health care, and America is two and a half times per head of the population. So when the health service was properly funded, and that was true up to 2009, 
when it was properly funded, it was excellent use of public money. It was, it was the best performing in the world in many areas. Where it was less well performing, it was improving re uh, year on year for cancer. Again, you will hear Kate Andrews saying the, one of the worst outcomes was mortality. Mortality is about poverty, it's about okay. housing, it's about many other features that are, are okay. uh, contributors Tony, I, I'll to tell you e equal uh, health care. Let's hear from Kate Andrews herself. Um, I mean, Kate, how do the sums add up to you? So, um, I, I'm going to debate with Tony in good faith. I noticed that he didn't actually mention this document once. Um, so, I suspect that he would agree that there's absolutely no evidence that the NHS is on the table for a trade negotiation with the USA in this document. Anyway, if he wants to discuss healthcare overall in the UK, I'm happy to do so. Uh, the research that he's pointing to that's come out of the IEA for years now has, uh, I think, quite rightly suggested, in line with almost every single international survey, that the US. Uh, sorry, not the U.S., the U.K., does not rank very well when it comes to patient outcomes. Uh, it is true that places like Switzerland and Germany spend a higher proportion of their GDP on health care, but places like Australia don't. And they are still getting better patient outcomes in really serious areas like certain kinds of cancer, really prominent kinds of cancer. Uh, and we're just not willing to discuss that here in the U.K. Uh, you know, I think uh, I've, I've made it very clear on many occasions that the U.S. model is not right for the U.K., but it is baffling to me that people won't look to to the rest of Europe, to Australia, to New Zealand, to Japan, to other developed countries, to see what they're doing better. And, and Tony says he's been on the front line and he's dealt with patients and their health. And again, I take in very good faith that that's what he cares about. I think, you know, from my perspective, if you do care about that, you want a kind of system that's going to get the best kinds of outcomes. And other systems that are roughly the same funding level as the NHS here in the UK do get better patient outcomes. We have mm. things to learn from them. The other key is that um, all the systems I've mentioned are are free, uh, they're, they're universal access, right? They're, they're a available to everyone regardless of their level of income. And I don't understand why people like Tony won't engage with that. Personally, I'd be up for putting slightly more money into a healthcare system if the money actually went to patients, if we started getting those similar patient outcomes that Australia or Switzerland or Germany gets. But until you're willing to engage on the system at all, we can't really have that conversation. I'm happy to engage on this all the time. Uh, in a, in that's the, the fundamental interest of patients is at the heart of NHS staff. And what you're saying about the debating in, 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 in good faith is, is, I'm afraid, not true, because you know very well that the cost of the NHS per person is lower than all of those other countries. That, it's that not in you, Australia. That, that's just not true, it, sir. It, it's it, not. It is true. It's roughly it's, it, exactly the it same, actually actually. Is, It actually is true, not but also the, 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 when the health care... Uh, was properly funded in this country up to 2010, it was the best performing in the world. And what you have over the last That's 10 years is, is the dual attack okay. of deliberate, un deliberate underfunding and privatisation. And can that is where we're really worried for just... trade deals, because the NHS is already significantly yeah. privatised. And when the US is debating from a, a position of huge strength over and above the, the UK, it will be demanding certain things, for example, uh, negative listing, so that anything that isn't excluded in a trade deal will forever be subject to market forces. Okay. Um, okay. Anything, me, uh, and and the, the ratchet clause okay. of anything that is already in the private sector, and, and up to 18% of okay. NHS funding is going to the private sector already, anything that's already there will not be allowed to return okay. to national service. Okay, Tony, I just want to put this question to both of you, because we hear this phrase so much now, um, the NHS being sold off, parts of it being sold off to the United States. What does that actually mean? Kate, what does that mean to you? Because it, it, the NHS, you know, both of you debating it, is such an emotional issue. Everyone has ties to the NHS. And when you talk about selling off, that sounds like such a damning term. Kate, what does it mean yeah. to you? It's very scary in political rhetoric, and I think it's very misleading. The King's Fund, uh, which is a very reputable think tank that actually, you know, publicly declares that it supports the style of the NHS, has made very clear that the NHS has not been privatized. It's under 10% of NHS funding that would go to private measures, and these often are not clinical. It's things mm -hmm. like buying hospital beds or providing catering. So unless you are so far in the socialist spectrum that you think that the government should be growing mm -hmm. its own publicly funded trees to cut them down to make their own doors for hospital 
hotel rooms, then of course you support that kind of money going to private okay. companies because it's just. But, but, but to be very, very clear, Tony, example, Tony is not Tony is not engaging on the document. He's he's making bold claims about what he thinks might happen okay. to the future what? of the NHS. That well, is not I, I in the document. I don't have today. Dozen, I don't and those have fears are not supported what, by what's what in here. What does selling off the NHS mean to you? I mean, something that's been talked about is U.S. pharma companies wanting access yeah. to U.K. markets, which would put prices up. Do you think it's conceivable that yes. the UK could do a deal where well, well, the health service will actually pay more for drugs? Are we really in the realms of that kind of madness? Is that what you're frightened of? Well, absolutely, because part of the trade deal negotiations will be about the protection of patents for drugs, for example. And in America, uh, insulin, which is now no longer on patent, it's, it should be a generic drug, uh, is a thousand percent... Uh, of the price in England and something like adrenaline which is a lifesaver for children with uh, allergic reactions is 1300 percent and there are many many examples so, so that, that estimation in the um, dispatches program on Channel 4 that said that the annual drug bill in the UK of 18 billion could actually go up realistically to 44 billion if these uh, aspects were not wholly protected in the, in the, in the, in the trade deal negotiations. These they're, ver they're very that real. They they're very, they're very real. They're very. Sorry, down. excuse me. I haven't finished. They're very real negotiations. You're not engaging with the actual evidence that we issues. have. Okay. And the, the, the fact that I haven't read a document that was only released today, whereas Kate does with her dozens of full timers in the Institute of Economic Affairs, just belies that they are a free. A free, uh, free trade think tank wanting to return public services to the private sector, and they, have, uh, they okay. are so well funded that they can afford that may to, to be read. Opinion, a, a, a we will continue to debate this issue. Not in this document. We will continue to debate this issue on Sky News. But thank you so much for your contribution. Thank you very uh, Tony much, Tony O'Sullivan and Kate Andrews. Thank.